And the basic thesis on it was that we're never going to have enough charging for the motorway service areas. And the example that I gave was the M1, which is the busiest road in the UK. It takes, on average, 200,000 vehicles a day. So what I want to do is show you what sort of charging we have uh, on the M1 and within close proximity. So what I've done is I've gone into ZapMap and I've created a filter. And what this filter does is it picks up the key networks that we would expect to be using for public charging. Fastnet, Genie Point, Mer, MFG, Osprey, BP Pulse, Chargeface Scotland, GridServe, Instafault, Ionity, Swalco, Apple Green, and Raw Charging. Uh, what this also does, you can't see it here, but take my word for it, is it identifies all those locations which have five or more rapid chargers. So any of the I icons that you see on here are exactly that they're rapid charges five or more so it's not going to pick up anything that's got four three two or one the the basic thesis is if you're going to have rapid charging at somewhere on the motorway services you don't need or you can't really deal with having just one there or maybe two you need a nice bunch a bunch of them so you need about five as a minimum so let's just start right down at the bottom of the m1 what i'm going to do is i'm going to zoom in here so you can see the m1 itself and you can also see a couple of miles either side of it. So it starts down at Brent Cross uh, on the A406. That's the start of the M1 and it winds its way up until we hit the M25. Now the very first one that we meet is this grid serve, sorry, this Fastnet in uh, St Albans. It's reasonably easy to get to from the M1 but it is a diversion. So you've got to go along the M25 a bit, up this way, into St Albans and then back and you can merge your way up on this way. There's no way of actually taking out a sharp corner on that, just for Potter's Crouch. So it's a, it's a good couple of miles off either way. So moving on, as we get further and further north, uh, we head up past where the A5 meets, up past Luton, uh, Toddington. You'll notice that we've, uh, we've gone past Toddington and Modo services here. Uh, nothing there because at the moment, there isn't a hub there. There's a couple of charges and that's it. Uh, moving further north, we hit the first one that's uh, what I would call quote unquote on the motorway. And that's the Milton Keynes uh, coachway, which is uh, the old BP Pulse site. Uh, and there are four Ionities there as well. Uh, that's not strictly speaking directly on the motorway. It's a couple of hundred yards off do a quick diversion and back on. So that's the first one that we've met. Uh, I will leave you to draw your own conclusions about reliability uh, and ease of use with Ionity and or BP Pulse. Moving further north, we're heading up past Northampton and we've now hit the very first actual on motorway MSA with a hub on there. And that's the newly installed Watford Gap grid serve units. There's um, I think that's seven or eight units there. Let's just have a quick look. Seven, oh, there we go. Seven units there, which is six new ones. And I think the existing uh, one for uh, Watford Gap that was there already. So that's the very first one that we've met. Further up, following it uh, northbound, you have uh, this one just off the M6, which is uh, the famous uh, Moto Rugby with the Tesla superchargers and uh, all the grid serve units. Uh, you can do that if you want. It's a couple of minutes diversion along the M6, and then you can uh, you can uh, take the A426 up north and back onto the M1. Uh, we'll move further north now. The eagle-eyed of you amongst here will have noticed I'm not picking up Tesla superchargers. I am actually picking up the Tesla superchargers that are open to non-Tesla vehicles, but there are none on this specific route. Further north. We have uh, Leicester Forest East motorways. Again, nothing there. You'll find this uh, fantastic little uh, hub here, MFG at Desford Crossroads, which, which has seven units. This has the same problem as one of the early ones that we looked at in that while it's relatively close to the motorway, it's not that convenient because you can't get off at this particular, at the Hinkley Road, the A47. There is no junction on the M1 there. You can get off at the A21, but then you can't get off at the B582. So what do we do here? We've got to keep going down the M69 and then you're way out of your way there. Or you have to take a right off the M's, uh, off Junction 21 
and wind your way down St John's up to B582 to get there and then ooh, where have we got it's got to be some way back on here or maybe there isn't maybe you have to go all the way back and get on a junction 10 again so not necessarily convenient moving further north uh, past uh, Leicester uh, up past Shepshed to Moto Donington Park where the A42 joins again motorway service area there there's only two grid serve units grid serve low power units there or oh, sorry medium power units to be strictly true and you can't uh, you can't call that a hub uh, further north we're getting up past uh, Nottingham now so even though Nottingham again traditionally has quite a good uh, charging presence uh, not a lot there at the moment other than this one which is one of our nice friendly uh, BP Pulse uh, units with five chargers there but again nowhere to actually get conveniently to it there is no junction at this point so in order to get to that you've got to get off down here at junction 25 work your way up that way and then uh, can we get on further north yeah you can get on around the Nottingham Ring Road and get off uh, get back on at uh, junction 26 Nuttall further north past South Normanton Stainsby Balbra and we're getting up now to the Sheffield area so the motorway takes the M1 takes a sharp left here uh, goes south of Rotherham goes east of Sheffield there is uh, a hub here a nine unit instavolt at BMP in Sheffield but again, not particularly convenient. Uh, you can get off at uh, Junction 34, Meadow Hall, work your way down here and up there and then work your way back if you want. But it's not actually what I would call on the motorway. Moving further north, we're going up past uh, Barnsley, uh, past uh, Kexborough. And now we come to the only the second motorway service area of the M1 that actually has a hub already there and that is Moto uh, Woolly Edge North and South Pound. Uh, we're, we're rapidly approaching 200 miles up the length of the M1 at this point and that's only the second hub that we've actually encountered. Further north uh, we've got this small, um, well I say small, this uh, reasonably sized eight unit MFG hub at Winnie Moor. Uh, again, close to the motorway, but not because this isn't actually a motorway junction. So you can't actually get off there. You've got to go up to junction 40, work your way back down there, uh, or rather down the B6475, uh, and then back up that way. So it's doable, but it's not on the junction. Uh, further north, uh, hit where the, M uh, the M1 and the M62 meet, nothing in this area. Now we get to Leeds, it swings off to the right, and now we get to the Leeds Skelton Lake Services, which is only the third motorway service area along the full length of the M1 that actually has a hub on site. And this hub is run by Ionity, six units there. There's another one up here, which is um, the MFG at Osthorpe. Again, nicely convenient, just off the motorway, I go for that. And then the M1 turns into the A1M. So let's just zoom out and look at the big picture again. You've got the full length of the M1. So let me fit it all in here. Full length of the M1. And on that, you've basically got three actual hubs at motorway service areas and a couple of additional hubs that within a few miles of the M1. Do we think that that's appropriate? Because I personally think we need more than that. 